In this video, we're taking a fresh look at pressure. So pressure, when it was originally introduced, was introduced as force per unit area. But there's a new way that you can look at it. You can look at it as energy density. And the purpose of this video is to sort of justify calling pressure energy density. But then a major point I'm trying to make is what's happening physically for a liquid to store energy in the form of pressure. So here's just a bit of motivation. If pressure is force per unit area, then the units of pressure, well, we're used to calling them Pascals now, but I can call them Newtons per square meter. What if I multiply the top and bottom by meters? I would get Newton meters per cubic meter or joules per cubic meter, in other words, energy density. Now that's not a proof, but it's a nice motivation that pressure could actually be looked at as energy density instead of force spread out over area. So there's a tricky point. As we're taking our first look at fluid dynamics, in order to use the continuity equation, and I'll just post a link to that real quick, we had to assume that the liquid we were talking about was incompressible, so that the same amount per second would flow at every point in a closed pipe. And the problem is, if our liquid was literally incompressible, then you couldn't store energy in the form of pressure. So the picture that I'm showing here looks at a liquid as a bunch of individual molecules that are attached by these little springs. Now, these are actually electrostatic interactions between the molecules, but they're spring-like in their nature. If you push two molecules too close together, they try to spring away from each other. If you pull them a little farther apart, they try to spring back toward each other. So if I tell you that this is a bunch of water molecules here under low pressure, they're spread out more. Then you put them under high pressure, you're compressing all those springs. So where is this energy that, that pressure has so that I can refer to it as an energy density? It's actually in the microscopic compression of all these little springy electrostatic interactions. The final point I need to make about this is that for liquids, these springs are incredibly stiff. So for water, for example, even under the pressure at the bottom of the ocean, it only compresses by a couple percent. So, of course, for our reasonable everyday fluid dynamic systems, where we're not dealing with incredibly high pressures, the assumption of incompressibility is accurate, while at the same time we can store energy in the pressure of the liquid. All right, let's look at a simple example. So in this example, I have a 2-liter soda bottle pressurized to about 50 psi, which is typical for a 2-liter bottle. And I want to find the energy stored in the form of pressure in there. Now, in your mind's eye, you should be seeing this model that it's actually a bunch of water molecules that are pressed a little bit closer than normal to each other because they're under high pressure. That's where your energy is physically. But the calculation is quite simple. If, if pressure is energy per unit volume, then the energy stored in the form of pressure must be just pressure times volume. So that's all we have to do here. And most of the work is actually unit conversions. So I want to convert that volume of two liters into cubic meters and you have to remember that there are 1000 liters in a cubic meter so I get 0 0.002 cubic meters for the volume and then my pressure of 50 psi has to be converted and you have to remember that there are 6895 pascals per psi and I get 3.45 times 10 to the fifth pascal Finally, I get my energy, and that's just pressure times volume in the correct units. And to three significant digits, I get 690 joules of energy. So the idea of pressure as energy density is going to be really important when we talk about Bernoulli's equation, which is just an expression of conservation of energy density in a fluid. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, Click on the Zax Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.